Let's begin by adding the Teams Carnival application to our Teams meeting. Before the meeting starts, the organizer can do that by simply editing the meeting in the calendar. If the meeting has already started, it can be done by clicking on the Apps icon at the toolbar on top of the screen and finding the app on the drop-down list. Once the Teams Carnival icon appears alongside the others, the app is ready to be launched. The main menu lists the currently available games with their required number of players. Let's take a look at Trivia Race. The game prompts the users to choose a speed setting, after which it launches an individual game window for each player and a synchronized timer. The scoreboard is being updated in real time until the players are out of time. Snakes and Ladders offers a traditional board game experience. In the side panel, each player can add their name to the list of participants by clicking on the top button. If the required number of players is met, the bottom button will launch a game window in the meeting stage. Unlike with the previous game, in this case the player's screens remain fully synchronized. Throughout the game, the side panel informs the players who is meant to roll the dice next, and the game mechanism ensures a player is not capable of making a move outside of their turn. Welcome to our rendition of the classic Pac-Man, tailored for Microsoft Teams. Starting the game is as simple as clicking play in the side panel. The game is styled to fit the dimensions of the side panel, providing a seamless experience. One of the unique features of this version of Pac-Man is the persistent high scores. These scores are meeting specific, allowing you to compete with your peers in a friendly manner. For a more immersive experience, you can share the game to the meeting stage. This allows all meeting participants to play their own instance of the game, complete with live persistent high scores. The objective is simple, achieving the highest score possible. When you do, your name ascends to the top of the leaderboard, immortalizing your gaming prowess. In addition to the competitive aspect, this game also produces fire compliant JSON health data. This data provides a record for all the games played during the meeting, capturing metrics like frequency and duration. When you're done, simply click Exit to stop the Unity game, saving your scores and health data for future references. Welcome to Jenga on Teams. Today we'll explore the seamless integration of Microsoft Teams with Unity, bringing the classic game of Jenga to a collaborative digital space. Our journey begins in the Teams side panel. Here, users can initiate the game. With a simple click on Start Playing, the Unity game engine is invoked. This action triggers the game to be shared on the Teams meeting stage, making it visible to all participants. We're now in the game's lobby. Players can type in their names, which are then added to the players list. This list is synchronized in real time across all participants. If someone tries to start the game with less than two players, our system prompts them with a warning. Once the required players have joined, 
the game can commence. Moving on to the actual game. The game system rotates turns based on the player's names. Each player gets a turn to carefully remove a block from the tower. As they make their move, the game state is synchronised across all users, ensuring a consistent experience. And just like the real life Jenga game, once a block is removed, the system places it back on top, adding to the challenge. The beauty of this digital adaption lies in its real time synchronisation. Every move made by a player is instantly reflected on all participants' screen, thanks to the integration with Fluid Framework. The game continues with players taking turns, the tension rising with each block removed. And then the inevitable happened, a wrong move and the tower collapses. But the fun doesn't end here. Any player can click restart and the game state is synchronized, rebuilding the tower for another round. In an input box and their name and the ready state will be showing on both game panel and the side panel the t-rex game you can choose to view a short plot before moving on the loading page once you are on the loading page hit the ready button to start In Space Shooter, players control a spaceship at the bottom of the screen. As tourists and enemy ships approach from the top, you can navigate your spaceship using the WASD keys to avoid these obstacles and use the sp space bar to shoot and destroy them. Generally, the enemy ship takes one shot to destroy while a tourist requires six shots. Each player starts with three shots, symbolized by hearts on the game panel while the current score is displayed in the top left corner. If you clear with an Astoris or enemy ship, you will lose one shirt but gain invisibility for 3 seconds. During this period, your spaceship can pass through and destroy obstacles without losing additional shirts. Once all shirts are gone, the game is over, and your final score is displayed on both game panel and the side panel. As all participants complete the game, the live notification will announce the player with the highest score on the game page. If you don't feel like playing and just want to relax, you can opt to leave the game at the start page. Enjoy smoothing background music while you take a break. After player enters their name in the input box, the name will be synchronized at both game panel and side panel, and the ready state is not ready, and you can set to ready by clicking the ready button, and a 20 second timer is set in ready part to avoid conflict error. Once all players are ready, people can start the game. During the game, the, the Rex has three hearts displayed in both the top left corner of the screen and game panel. The current score is displayed in the top right corner. Players can simply press the space bar to make Rex jump to avoid those obstacles. When Rex clears with an obstacle, Rex will lose one heart but also become invulnerable for three seconds. During the invulnerability time, the Rex can pass through obstacles with losing any hearts. Once all three hearts are lost, the game is over and the final score is displayed in both the game panel and the side panel. When all players have completed the game, a live notification will announce the player with the highest score on the game page. Like for some participants don't want to play, 
They can access the game. Additionally, players who do not submit the names with a set period will also be removed from the game. Players start the game and one shares the stage, as we can see here, which launches the app in the main window. As per the title screen's instruction, we use the side panel to add ourselves to the game, and when we have two people in the game, we can click the Join Session button to start the actual application. All the information is synced, so everything that one screen sees, both screens sees, like which panels are here and what text is in the dialog box. As we can see, Player 1 has three options, and chooses to attack. In the other client, Player 2 chooses to heal. Now Player 1 is going to use a special attack, which generates and synchronizes a random value in the fluid container, then passes it to both clients, so both clients have the same outcome. In this case, it hit. Here, Player 2 also uses their special attack. Player 2 special attack has a 50-50 chance of damaging both fighters. When one player's health goes to zero, they die and the other player wins. Welcome to the Bloom Bomb a turn-based multiplayer game. Now in this demo, the two attendees in this meeting are twin, the meeting organizer who has a privileged control over the game, and Li Gu, the meeting participator. The game application has four states, where different synchronized functions are shown differently based on their roles. Now we're in the first state, on setup state, where meeting attendees, except the organizer himself, can choose to be or not to be in the game. Organizers can remove gamers and shuffle the order. When the organizer clicks the button, the game enters the next state, the setup state. This is a state where the organizer configures game parameters, the blow range and the turn range. The blow range randomly generates a number, beyond which the balloon will explode. The turn range, however, sets up the minimum and the maximum number of palms for a single turn. Then, from the view of the organizer, functions of data export and the game reload are provided exclusively. Let's click the submit button. As you can see, customized live notifications pop out, which denotes the game is now at the state of started, where the details of the blow range and the turn range are displayed on the top of the meeting stage. Once we click the palm, the animation is triggered synchronously across users. For your information, the palm can also be triggered by motion input. Clicking next schema, passes a turn to the next people in the list. The pop from the counter gamer, the pawn function is blocked for the rest of the meeting attendees. Repeat this process until the balloon blows up. The user who blows it up will be displayed through the left event, which denotes the game is now in the last state, the ended state. As the organizer, you can start again and everything will be refreshed. Last but not least, the game data is accumulative and it can be exported at any time. 